The following interview was conducted with, Jean, with Coach Jean Cady for the Purdue University's Library's Oral History Program. It took place on uh, Wednesday, August the 15th, 2007, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your early life and parents and early school. Well, um, I grew up in uh, West Central Kansas, Larned, Kansas, L-A-R-N-E-D, and uh, my dad was a florist. So uh, basically, I spent my entire life, during World War II, we left for two or three years to farm, and then uh, we uh, ended up back at Larned again, and, and uh, it was a great little town because uh, you knew everybody, and, and uh, it was a good, great time in my uh, childhood because uh, it was just fun. Uh, we were not. We were very poor, but it seemed like that we had everything we needed. So I thought we were rich. <laughs> so it was a, it was a good time growing up in uh, Kansas. Uh, you learn a lot about farming, of course, and and usually uh, sports is everything in each community. So and of course church, and then uh, you're just if you're involved in all sports. I played all four sports, so uh, I stayed busy. And thank goodness I had sports because. I stayed out of trouble that way. <laughs> when were you born? Uh, May 21st, 1936. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a sister, Norma. Uh -huh. She lives in Sacramento with her husband, Bob, and uh, they have three children, so uh, uh, they're both retired and uh, turned their business over to their son, Kenny, and uh, they're, we talk maybe once or twice sure. uh, you know, every week or so, so uh, that's an uh, important part of my life. When did you go to uh, grade school and high school there in Can uh, where you went, were born? Went to the first grade in uh, at uh, Third Ward high, uh, grade school and, and uh, Larned, and then uh, during the war we moved out to Dighton, Kansas, and went to uh, a one-room schoolhouse out there for one year with a with a pot belly stove, and all the classes were in one room. And my first day uh, I went to class, I rode a Shetland pony, and it rolled over in the creek with my new school clothes, so I was quite a mess. But uh, then the third grade, we went in town to Dighton, and fourth grade, then the fifth and sixth grade, we moved back to Kansas. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to high school? Or back to Larned. Yeah. Went to high to? school at Larned, Larned High School, graduated in 1954. Was it a large class? And what, About 100 activities? kids in our class. And you were involved in athletics there as well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Played football and uh, basketball and track, and then played baseball in the summer. Oh, busy. Well, yeah. and also, we, in those days, you pretty much had to work uh, if you were poor like we were, so I worked in my dad's greenhouse, and uh, that was a good experience. Where'd you go, uh, where did you go to college then? Went Tell to Garden City it. Junior College for two years, and then I w went to Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, the land-grant school just like Purdue, and uh, got my degree there in 1958. Okay. And got my master's in 64. What was, did you live on campus, were you, or did you commute, or how was Lived in East happened? Stadium. We lived underneath East Stadium at K-State. The trouble was it was across the uh, street from the Union, so I spent a lot of time playing bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but in those days it was good because most of our professors were our coaches, so they knew where we were, so that's they a lot different it. is now. Yeah. Any other activities that you participated in when you were in college at all? Well, I was in the uh, CGEP fraternity, and uh, that socially taught me a lot of things about how to dress right and how to behave socially, but uh, and met new friends, so that was fun. Okay. Then let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, your career path after that. What sort of things did you involve before you came and how you came to Purdue? Well, I uh, played with the Steelers for about in August of 1958. My knee went out for the fourth time. I'd heard it previous times at in college, and so I came back home because I, did, I didn't have enough money to get it operated on, so I came back home, and Buddy Parker was a coach of the Steelers, and he said, get your knee well, come back next year and try it again, but I I got a, blo a job at Bloyd High School coaching and teaching, so uh, 1958 is when I started teaching. Mm -hmm. Was your major in college, was that sort of uh, sports or? It was uh, physical, physical ed education, okay. biology, and education. Uh-huh, okay. And then what uh, what transpired then after that? What sort well, of I taught at Bloyd High School for uh, seven years. I taught psychology, uh, economics, general science, phys ed, study hall, and then I, I coached, uh, uh, I was an assistant football coach, head basketball coach, head golf coach, and assistant track coach. Did all that for $4,200, so that's how I started. <laughs> Where, where's Bloyd, where's that located? It's up in northern Kansas, okay. not too far from the Nebraska border. Okay. And then what was the... Then I, then I was there seven years and uh, went to uh, Kansas State and got my master's in the summers. It took me three summers to get my master's and uh, knew a gentleman in junior college down in Hutchison by the name of Sam Butterfield and 
he had told me when I was at Garden City, he was a high school coach at Garden and I was a JUCO student and uh, we became friends because our practice times overlapped so I got to know him through that situation and he said uh, if I'd ever get a job uh, uh, in high school he'd watch for me because he'd like to have me be his assistant and then when I did become a coach uh, he had come to Beloit for career days and uh, he said uh, if you go get your masters I'll hire you as my assistant at Hutch and then I'm going to retire next year as a coach and you'll become the head coach so then in 1964 or 65 I became the head basketball coach at Hutchins and Junior College and I taught biology there and was assistant football coach for 6500 so I got a big raise. <laughs> what, was it, what was it like teaching in the junior college? Or it was you? fun because the students at uh, Hutchins and a lot of them are pre-engineers uh, for K-State and uh, they were good students and and interested and we had the national junior college tournaments there in basketball at Hutch so and I really enjoyed coaching with John Maytosh, the football coach. I was a defensive back coach for nine years and uh, spent nine years of my teaching career at Hutchison. So my first 16 years was in uh, high school and junior college. Mm -hmm. And then what, what uh, go on from there? Well, that? then um, Eddie Sutton was the head basketball coach at Arkansas then, and he was recruiting one of my players, Charles Terry. And uh, 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 as, I, as I got to know Eddie through recruiting Charles, uh, he got to know me and he needed an assistant so he hired me as his assistant uh, in 1974 uh, to go to Arkansas. So I became his assistant for four years and mm -hmm. we went to the Final Four in 78. So we had a great team and Sidney Moncrief, Marvin uh, Del uh, Delph and uh, Ronnie Brewer were our three uh, mus basketeers we called them. They were great and we went to the Final Four at St. Louis in 1978. So that was a great experience for me being an assistant coach at Division One school and, and uh, since we went to the Final Four, Western Kentucky's job opened and they were interested in me and I interviewed for that in 78 and became the head coach at Western Kentucky at Bowling Green in 1978 and was there two years. And then um, I coached a USA team uh, called the South uh, Team the Sports Festival at Colorado Springs in 1979 and Fred Schaus who was assistant athletic director here then was I believe he was on the uh, Olympic Committee and he saw me coach and then uh, in that summer and uh, he s we won the gold medal uh, in the sports festival and he came back and told George King when uh, after Lee Rose resigned here that that I think I know the coach you need to interview or one of them at least so because of my experience in uh, Colorado Springs as a USA coach uh, in the summer uh, and knowing Fred Schaus he came back and told George King about me and uh, then we had a good year the next year went to the NCAA at, at Western Kentucky and then when Lee Rose resigned I interviewed for the job here in 1980 and got the job here in 1980. Okay. Backing up uh, one question, what, what did you notice a difference from high school when you went from, from Arkansas because you've been working with the high school and or rather junior college people? Well it was a lot better because I didn't have to teach I mean I enjoyed really enjoyed teaching but that's very time consuming as you know making up tests uh, recording grades, uh, grading the test, uh, has to prepare your, your uh, teaching assignment every day. So all I had to worry about was coaching and recruiting and um, teaching on the floor in basketball. So that made it a lot easier. And then I, not only that, they furnished me a car. So uh, if you know anything about high school coaches and junior college, they don't furnish you much. So that was great to have a car furnished. And, it was a step uh, up. <laughs> and it was a step up. Sure. So that was a great uh, opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. So that brings you to Purdue. You have, uh, let's talk about your family. You have a wife and any children? Pat uh, is my wife and I have a daughter in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, she's married and they have a son, Kyle. And uh, I have a, my son uh, lives in, uh, uh, my, that's my daughter, Beverly. And then my son, Danny, he lives in Emporia, Kansas. And, and he and Angie have a little boy named Ray. So yes, okay. I have two children. How did, how did you meet your How did you meet your wife? I met her when I was a teaching and bowling, coaching at Bowling Green. Okay, very good. So you came, now you're at Purdue, and let's talk a little bit about that. One comment was that you had said that uh, today's players may be different than in the past. On what I try to do is be a good teacher. Yeah, I think young men uh, go into coaching and think it's going to be all sports and uh, uh, coaching, and it's not. It's about teaching, teaching fundamentals, teaching life skills. Uh, teaching about what's right and wrong and try to be a good example in that manner so always enjoyed teaching a lot of people ask me if I miss coaching I says I say no I don't miss coaching but I do miss teaching I miss being around the professors and the students so that was always enjoy very enjoyable for me mm -hmm. 
And you work with the stu work with the with your players one on one and oh yeah in all yeah the you have to teach fundamentals and teach. Uh, the system of fast break or the offensive uh, plays or defensively what you want technique wise so it's always about teaching. Okay. What are some of your uh, motivational tactics for you? Uh, someone said you prepare your players for the game of basketball as well as the game of life. Any comment on that? Or well yeah I think the main thing about uh, motivating people is uh, I think two things that that uh, you need to have enthusiasm and you need to ha be honest and if you if people can trust you they'll follow you and uh, if you have enthusiasm people you can see you enjoy what you're doing so that makes it a lot easier to teach mm -hmm. so those two things have been huge with me enthusiasm and honesty yeah okay that sounds good oh recruiting there's all kinds of challenges and your goals and problems and is your focus uh, in state or out of state uh, and uh, we try to recruit in-state first. I've always thought Indiana kids would be able to get home easier on weekends and stuff. They'd stay happier that way. But also, when you need better players, if say there weren't uh, players from Indiana uh, at a position you needed, we went out of state. We've had kids from from New Jersey and uh, Georgia and California. So we had them from Texas. We had them from all over. So uh, we try to stay within uh, 200 miles of Purdue, but. Uh, we have gone out quite a ways to get players too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a big challenge though, isn't it? With well, it's I difficult to recruit uh, uh, if, if you don't enjoy it, but I always enjoyed it. So I enjoyed visiting with the families and uh, selling the kids on the product here at Purdue because we had everything here. We were in a great league. We had a great uh, arena to play in. It was always sold out. And uh, you had, we had, you get a degree from Purdue, you can get a job anywhere just about. So. We had a lot of good selling points. We, and then when I first took the job in 1980, the Big Ten was one of the few leagues that had television uh, throughout the country. So we had an edge there because kids always want to play on TV. So the parents can see them as well. Right? Then later every league got the TV th opportunity so that cut, didn't become too much of an edge later. But, sure. but uh, as you know right now they're going to build a new, uh, add a new facility to, to Mackey so that should really help Matt Painter and his staff uh, recruit a lot better. Mm -hmm. Have there been any uh, changes in rules and procedures for recruiting over time and how? Oh my goodness, the rule book's that thick. Yeah, okay. it's uh, because people didn't file the rules, they always had to put in some new rule to, to take care of that situation. So the rule book is huge. Uh, coaches have to take a test every spring uh, over the rule book so you can pass that test with the NCAA and so you can go out and recruit the next year. So. Uh, yeah, the rules have uh, changed a lot. There's a lot of things you got to know about what you can and can't do. Yeah. So you have to take the test every year? Is that every, required? Every year we had to take it, yes. Is that for all sports? Uh, yes. Okay. All sports have to take it. Um, does it... Uh, Pertains mostly about recruiting and uh, eligibility. Okay. Have they gone to the online or is it still pencil and paper? Still pencil and paper. No, you can't do it online yet. <laughs> They're working on that. Thing, I right? thought because of my age, my latter years, I should get off the hook, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't grandfather. You thought you'd grandfather in, right? <laughs> no, right. they wouldn't let me. <laughs> How about some um, uh, respond to some goals for graduation? Your graduation rates. How are the goals? Uh, well, we expected every kid to graduate. Uh, we had a, we graduated the um, ninety probably ninety percent. Uh, 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 I think I had like I think 92 players here in my 25 years at Purdue, and, and I know that uh, close to uh, 85 of them got their degrees, or mm -hmm. at least uh, will try to end up getting the degrees. So we were very fortunate there. We worked hard at that. We had great people helping us in the academic area. Uh, Bob King was great uh, helping with that. Uh, uh, Ken Pfeiffer. We were were blessed with people that really knew what the kids needed to do as far as staying on track. And then I had great assistants. I always had very loyal assistants that were very attentive to the to the kids' academics. Kevin Stallings played for me and then he was an assistant here for a while and he was a good student. And then Bruce Weber uh, also, as you know, as a coach at Illinois now, was very good at that. So we had a lot, I had a lot of good, Tom Ryder was a great assistant, uh, Steve Lavin, uh, Tony Branch, we, on and on and on. You have, a huge amount and then I hired Conzo Martin my last few years here and of course then we brought Matt Painter on before I retired so he could take over so yeah. uh, and Todd Foster is one of my assistants so I'm very proud of these guys and uh, they all worked hard to achieve what they're getting done now yeah got a good team good team of right. coaches right yeah uh, here's one a little bit of a change how about day in the life of a coach 
uh, say, how do you prepare, say, for a home game versus an away game? Is it all the same? Um, well, I, I think you prepare for uh, the games by your practice habits. You okay. learn how to work hard, how to be organized, what to expect. We, we would always channel our kids through different endeavors like, uh, say, three seconds on the sideline to score a basket or under your own basket. You have to go full court in 20 seconds and two minutes left in the game. you got to know what to do as far as uh, shot choices, that sort of thing. So practice uh, pretty much develop our game technique. And I was always a believer that defense and rebounding won big for you. Although we coaches all want to fast break and score a lot, usually those teams don't make it too far in the NCAA. Why is that? Would you say? Well, defense, usually defensive teams win. They play hard in those defense and have good shooters and uh, understand how important uh, being physical and rebounding is. And weight training was a big part of our program here to make the kids get stronger and I think weight training prevents injuries, although my last five years here it seemed like we had a multiple amount of injuries and, and that kept a lot of our good players from being better and, and uh, that, that was a, a bad part in my career. I don't, I don't enjoy looking back my last five years because we didn't do what I thought we ought to do, go to the NCAA and win big. Right. Is the preparation for the tournaments uh, pretty much the same as when you have regular games or is there more stress on the, on the players, do you think, getting ready for that? Any oh comments? gosh, I don't think there's probably not any more stress than what I put on them. You know, I, I we worked hard. A daily uh, daily routine would be you usually uh, you know you're going to work 14, 18 hours a day. If you worry about hours, you're in the wrong position uh, uh, position being a coach. So uh, I think you know getting ready for the tournament that that uh, you have to have skills and uh, habits develop, good habits uh, make good basketball players. So uh, we're we're always looking for better ways to do things. I'm always, I was always talking to coaches that coach in the pro ranks and other college coaches, uh, even high school coaches are probably our best coaches because they teach the, the proper things as far as fundamentals. So uh, the NCAA is always something special to us and, and I think you have to have players that want to win more than you do in the NCAA and sometimes you don't have that because the coaches usually want to win the most. <laughs> you got to balance it off, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. When I have the um, the rivalry, IU and Purdue rivalry, and of course Bobby Knight was here when you were here. He who was here before you came. Well, he, he was had, here when I got here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's sort of been a little bit of a. It was always a rivalry. Always a good. Well, it's game. one of the greatest rivalries in the country, Indiana, uh, Purdue, and basketball, and it is in other sports too. Sure. Uh, we had some great games. Uh, those are fun times because the Bloomington. Fans were, if you went over there, they were really on you. And if, when uh, Coach Knight and his team came here, our fans were really on him. So it was always a high intense, uh, most important game of the year type attitude, even though we knew it wasn't the most important game because they're all important. But that game, it seemed like you had bragging rights in the summer if you won them. Right. <laughs> oh, dear. There were a couple of icons in basketball I think you would address. One, of course, is John Wooden uh, and Lou Henson and just Heathcote, these are people that... Well, John Wooden, you know, graduated from Purdue, he's an All-American here, Player of the Year, two or three years here, a National Player of the Year, and uh, I think they won a, the National Tournament here uh, in the 30s, uh, but in those days they voted on it, you know, they didn't have playoffs, but uh, uh, of course we all know what John Wooden did at UCLA when he won 10 championships, and st he stayed in touch with us and uh, got to be good friends of his when I... Uh, was uh, in my later coaching years because he was an alumnus and he sometimes would, would give me, uh, kind of needle me about, you get too many technicals, coach, you need to calm down. <laughs> and uh, he was always great to work with, fun guy to talk to. Uh, uh, he was amazing, his memory, and he's, and he's in his 90s now and he still recites poetry and he's great. Lou Henson was a, a coach at uh, Illinois that was very competitive, great coach, and we had a lot of great games with Illinois too. They were, at some times, maybe Illinois just as big a rival as uh, Indiana was, although nobody in the state of Indiana wants to admit that. But uh, and Judd Heathcote was probably my best coaching friend at, when he was at Michigan State, and he still is. He lives in Spokane, Washington, mm -hmm. uh, with his uh, wife Beverly. So uh, those three people were you know, pretty had been pretty huge in my life as far as coaching. Mm -hmm. How did the Johnny Wooden Classic bet started? That's the one that's in Indianapolis, and they have his, it has his name attached to it. Well, I started with a gentleman that wanted to kind of put that together uh, since uh, you know people were so. Uh, active and love basketball in Indiana. They th 
to put the John Wooden name with it made it special and, and uh, get good teams to come in. You play two games usually. Uh, we've played a lot of teams in that, uh, uh, tur and that's not a tournament, but in that, in that double header that was always mm -hmm. very exciting, a lot of fun. And of course, John was always there, so he was a banquet speaker the night before and was fun to listen to. But uh, there's a business group to put that together to try to make money, I suppose. Sure, but it's nice that he was able to come. I yes, think he's he... come. He's been coming uh, every year almost. I don't know whether he did last year or not, but he's he came every year I played in. I never coached in it. Yeah, and he's a very colorful person. Um, then during your, uh, how about the 500 game uh, in Jan 04? And you were quoted as saying, "I'm glad it's over and meet with with mainly so you guys will quit asking me about it." <laughs> And to make the share well, I don't, I don't even remember researchers. what game that was. Was it Louisville? I don't remember. Was it Minnesota? I don't no, remember no, even who we were playing. But yeah. uh, uh, to me, the next game was always the most important one and qualifying for the NCAA, that sort of thing. But sure. uh, uh, I don't even remember when that was, to tell you the truth. Uh, counting high school, junior college, and uh, at Arkansas and Western Kentucky and here, I've probably been involved in over 800 wins. So. Uh, that's always fun to be in, involved in winning programs and being with schools that had tradition because sure. Beloit had good tradition so that made it easier. Hutch Junior College had great tradition in Arkansas we re kind of rebuilt their tradition and Western Kentucky always had great basketball tradition so uh, and of course Purdue always did so uh, if you can coach at schools that have tradition it's a lot a lot easier it's never easy but it's a lot easier if you don't have tradition. Sure that's right you said our goal was to win the game to stay tied for first, which is what, uh, but that was kind of a big challenge. Then also during your tenure, there were some offers that uh, were other places, but you decided to stay. When, what, San Diego State and? Well, San Diego State, uh, yeah. Arizona State, we almost went there, but my wife thought that it was too hot for the dogs <laughs> in Tempe. No, well, there's air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a silly uh, excuse because we really didn't want to go, but we really uh, appreciated the fact that they wanted us. Sure. Ohio State uh, talked to me once, Texas talked to me, uh, Houston talked to me, and Kansas State called me once, but, uh, and then San Francisco almost went there my last year here, but uh, I wanted to get the right coaching here to take my place, and so I stayed another year to make sure Matt Painter got the job. So. Uh, I had a lot of chances to leave, but uh, this is where we made our home, and this is still our home. All right, and uh, it's it's a, it's a, it can be a wrenching decision to to think it through and things of that sort. Sure. But, but um, on the other hand, it's a compliment that they respect what you've done. Yeah, uh, well said. That's right. exactly yeah. right. So uh, uh, it was always uh, interesting to see uh, the challenge of building the program up. Though was always something I would have liked to have done, but uh, I just wanted to keep Purdue uh, at the top level sure. if we could. Very good. What are the difficulties of staying the course when the team is not playing up to par? There's a losing streak and coping with the fans' reaction and alumni. Well, thank goodness in those days I didn't have a computer, so I didn't know what they were saying on uh, over the computer, uh, uh, email, and all that baloney. I, I never saw any of that, so I was never affected by it. Didn't care what they said anyway. But now I have a computer, so I kind of see some of those comments, and uh, some of them uh, it's ridiculous what they say about Coach Tiller and. And, uh, and the other coaches in the country. So uh, people uh, don't know how difficult it is to win the Big Ten, and they're not very realistic sometimes. So um, uh, the, it, was a, it was a great uh, opportunity for me, is all I can tell you, to be here for 25 years, and it was sure. fun, and, and I met a lot of good people, and I've got a, good, a lot of good friends through here. Does it affect the, the do you think it affects the, stu the, the players, did they hear these things or, or not? Well, usually we didn't mention it to them. Okay. You know, any, I don't like negative comments, right. so right. usually if you are negative, you get a negative result. So we try to be very positive and not get involved in that yeah, stuff. Yeah, on the upbeat side, that's what's very key. A um, couple of rewards that you've gotten as you're approaching retirement. When was that uh, Alumni Service Award you got from the Alumni Association in 87, which was kind of nice. Yeah, that was great. Very much yeah. appreciated. I give a lot of talks, hundreds of talks for the alumni, so uh, I thought they should have paid me more, but they didn't. But uh, uh, there was a, you know, a, a lot of great times there because I got to be with uh, uh, Joe Rudolph as a great mentor sure. for me, and that was something special. And, uh, and Maury Williamson uh, in the Ag Department, I helped with some Ag uh, speeches too, so that was always fun. Yeah. And then uh, you got the uh, the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame medallion in 2001. Yeah, you know, when you time you're put in the Hall of Fame, it's usually because you had great players and great assistants, and and you were lucky to be at the right place at the right time. So I'm in several Hall of Fames, but 
but uh, I'm going to be put one in, in Kansas. They're going to put me in that one in October, so I'm excited about that. But uh, uh, Hall of Famers are usually because you're around the right people. How do they usually tell, how do you sometimes find out about it? Do they just sort of, a, some, is it ever a surprise for you? Oh, well, not usually. They usually, okay. t you know, write letters because you have to get ready for the banquets and stuff, so you usually know ahead of time. <laughs> it's not a surprise then, right? But I think that Verizon one is nice that the National Association of Basketball Coaches, the Literacy Champion Award. That's yeah, because, uh, you know, and with, uh, with young people, I'd go around the grade schools or junior highs and talk to them how important it was to enjoy reading and, and that was always something I thought was very special to enjoy reading because when I was a uh, fifth grader in uh, Garfield, Kansas grade school, it's out in western Kansas too, uh, polio was a big thing in those days, infantile paralysis, so you're always scared to death, you know, you're going to get it. But luckily I got through that. But uh, we had it so bad in our schools, they had to let school off for six weeks, and I thought that was going to be, you know, that's going to be great. I'm out of school, I could run the pastures, get in the horse tank, and play baseball, I would go with my uncle, ride to road grader and those sort of things. And lo and behold, my mother checked out 65 books, so I had to read a book every day. So that, that was good for me, and she, she uh, surprised me. But it was, in the long run, it was great for me. That was one me. of your early challenges in life, right? <laughs> how learn how to read right. <laughs> oh, a and remember other, what you read. Yeah, a couple of other awards which are kind of, that Naisman Award is, is sort of nice for the from the national the Interna international basketball association foundation. Yeah, you know that um, Mr. Naismith, Dr. Naismith, invented the game, and his grandson was the one that nominated for me. So that's very much appreciated. It's a huge trophy I have in my living room, so it's very much appreciated. That's a special award, and and uh, if you come to my home, I'll show it to you. Oh, <laughs> I did, did. Did they notify you? At, was it at a special dinner, and or did you know ahead of time when you were going to get? They had it? a special dinner here for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty nice. And then he got that special Boilermaker Award. Um, but I think here, is this the John Wooden Legends of Coaching? Yeah, that was just let this past fall. I went to L.A. and they presented me with, to the, with the John Wooden Legend Award. They give one coach every year that award that they, I guess, they think exemplifies uh, sportsmanship, believe it or not. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, results of your teams and that sort of thing. So that was very much appreciated and, and uh, spent a uh, Spent a great time there. Steve Lavin was kind of my my chauffeur. He took me around uh, uh, L.A. and out to his home, so that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, one of the the base basketball writers. You got uh, one of the uh, an award from them, which was the second of the big the, from the Big Ten that you won the United States Basketball Writers of America. Yeah, that was Coach of the Year. Yeah. Um, amazing that writers would invo uh, you know uh, vote me in as Coach of the Year. Because I gave a lot of them a lot of static a lot of times, but I always enjoyed uh, needling them and having fun with them and firing back at them if they would say something to me that was derogatory. So uh, uh, that was appreciated too. So uh, that was special. Yeah, you've got you've got quite a few. Which and I think the uh, that Lions Award, which they sponsor the annual awards. You're the basketball, don't they? The local one. Yeah, they uh, they sponsor the banquet here right. uh, in the spring, and that was always very much appreciated. So uh, I belonged to the Lions Club up in Beloit, Kansas, when I was in high school, and that was always fun when they had their luncheons, and and I always appreciate what the Lions did here for us. Yeah, and um, how about the uh, gene pool? Co a couple comments on the gene pool for our researchers. Well, the gene pool, of course, as we all how know, it is came this, about. It uh, came about uh, because I don't think the students really liked. Uh, the seating arrangement, the way they had it in the early days of Mackey, so we kind of got it where we put them all together in one section, and then this something this kind of grew into a spirit thing, and uh, they be, just called the gene pool, which was I, I didn't think of it. Some students thought of it. I guess they had a contest to name it, and uh, it was just something that was fun. They had a lot of uh, excitement during the games, and something uh, we appreciated their enthusiasm during the game, and and you really have a home court advantage uh, in basketball at home, so, and the students help, uh, help develop that. One year, my wife spent the money to take them up to Michigan, and we needed that game to get in the NCAA, and, and we sent a couple of bus loads up there, so that was very much appreciated by myself and our staff, and my wife paid for the buses, so that was uh, special, and they, we won that game at Michigan to qualify for the NCAA, so I always remember how the gene pool was really special to us. Oh, that. How how do you feel? What does it, you feel when you walk into Mackey? Uh, depending, is depending on the team that are when you walk into it before a game. Well, I felt good if we had a good team. 
<laughs> but it was always exciting. Uh, you know, we were sold out here for 10 years. Sure. Uh, we were uh, one of the special arenas in America as far as enthusiasm. And the crowd was always very in, loud and uh, enthusiastic and helped us win a lot of games. So that was very much appreciated. And the students were always great, so very supportive. And, and we were... We were a special uh, basketball program for many years. Right. And, and I expect no Matt's going to get it the same way, too. Sure. I, I raise that because the researchers are going to, you know, be seeing this. It's sort of what do people feel when they walk, you know, they walk in and how, from a coach's standpoint is what I'm saying. Not well, it's felt players. special because sure. you knew you were going to have an edge with the crowd, was, crowd's enthusiasm and the noise. And, and uh, they were very knowledgeable about the game of basketball in Indiana. So that was always something that... Uh, you felt like that uh, you, it helped you win, and uh, yeah, you went out there on the floor fired up. You always were, you felt like we can get this game tonight. Although I never thought we'd ever lose a game, uh, I never ever thought we'd win a game. So it was kind of like you just go play it and make sure at the end of the game you got more points than the other team, and hope you did a good job teaching during the week. <laughs> okay, you were president of the um, National Association of Basketball Coaches. What what did that in, was involved? With well, that? the they're the guardians of the game okay. of basketball, the NABC it's called, and uh, it's a it's a board that helps govern the rules and the integrity and. Uh, helps make sure the coaches are treated right and, and uh, make sure the game is treated right and make sure we cooperate with the referees and it just encompasses the whole game of basketball in all areas. So uh, National Association of Basketball Coaches' uh, lo uh, slogan is guardians of the game. So that's pretty much uh, in a nutshell what it means. Who is comprised of that? All the schools that play or is it? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Division Two, Division Three, uh, junior colleges, Division One. Uh, there's a board that controls it. The coaches are on the board. Then Jim Haney uh, in Kansas City is the executive director, and Reggie Minton is his assistant. So they're a special group of men. Mm -hmm. Do you work? Uh, is there any? Con con there's no connection with the NCAA at all, though. This is. Oh yeah, they oh, work really? with them hand in hand. Oh, do yeah. they? Okay. Yeah, NCAA's got to keep their finger in everything, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> they got to watch you. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about. Uh, a little bit about retirement, what you've been doing since you retired to share some things with us. Well, I'm on the Hall of Fame uh, board uh, back in Springfield, and I'm uh, on a foundation in Kansas City for the NABC, and I'm on the NIT selection committee, so still got my finger. Then I coached at Toronto for four months uh, with the Raptors uh, a year ago, and then right after that, my wife got very ill. She had open heart surgery and colon surgery, and then that taken her about a year now to recover so uh, I've learned that nursing is a lot harder than coaching so I've learned a lot about that and and we spent uh, not this summer but the previous summer down in Indianapolis uh, getting her getting her through that at the heart center we were there four weeks and then we were at St. Vincent's at Carmel for four weeks and then at the uh, rehabilitation hospital of Indiana on, on uh, 38th Street for four weeks so we spent 12 weeks in in Indianapolis and thank goodness she's getting well and Good. and uh, in fact, I just came from re being with, uh, with her at rehab over at uh, home hospital. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a great challenge. It's amazing what they can do in medicine now because she had some very serious health issues and, and uh, she got through them all. And, and uh, it's been great to see how much she's improved. And now she's cooking meals in the evening and uh, uh, getting sassy again. So that's good. So we're... <laughs> We're uh, back on the good health uh, trail again, we hope. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, with the Raptors, how, did you notice a difference? In, in, uh, the, that was your first association with a professional team, was it not? Yes. How, what was your experience? What did you, any comments on that? Well, being up well it was fun. Uh, the guys, they like you, they want you to teach. If they know you're honest, they can trust you, so they'll listen. I always, and I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I uh, had, uh, one of the assistant coaches' name is Jim Todd. I developed a great friendship with him, and then Bobby Peterson was a video coordinator, and we became good friends, and we both all like golf, so we become involved. And in fact, they drove down here this summer to play golf with me, and that was appreciated. So I developed two great friendships, and uh, Wayne Embry was the gentleman that really talked me into going up there, and uh, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the, NA, the NBA is a great life. Mm -hmm. It's a Good way to live. If you get, if you got a son that's good enough to play in the NBA, you're probably going to have a pretty good secure future because <laughs> they make pretty good money. <laughs> oh, how'd you like Toronto then? But did Toronto's you? beautiful. Uh -huh. I love Toronto. I lived in the Western Hotel there, and uh, on the lake, so it's beautiful. Beautiful town. Great 
a melting pot of all nationalities, so that was educational. I'd, the uh, arena was only about three or four blocks from my hotel, so I didn't even have a car. Um, so I'd fly back and forth to Indianapolis to come home, and uh, sure. uh, the Raptors had their own uh, Air Canada plane, so that was always great. We got to the games easy. So uh, Toronto's a beautiful city, and I really enjoyed it. Very clean, uh, a lot of fun there. They're, they're good basketball fans, believe it or not, because they're, you, you know, in Canada, usually known for hockey, but they love their basketball in Toronto too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Um, now, no, one other thing, another thing was the uh, Habitat for Humanity, the house that was built. How did that come about? And well, he was asking you, to help him with it. Uh, I'm sorry. Have you visited the home, or? Well, I went by there when we opened, when they gave it to the people. Uh -huh. you know, uh, but I didn't do much. I helped put in the gas lines, and that's well. That's that a was hard a, job. That was a. I had a good coach. This guy helped me do it. <laughs> but uh, they just wanted to use my name to do that, and uh, I appreciate them asking me. And it's great to see 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 a family get a home like that. Right. And that was fun. Right. How about uh, a favorite basketball memory? If I asked you that, you think about that. Oh wow. I uh, probably my favorite basketball memory was my in 1984. We were picked ninth in the league, and we had really smart kids. Uh, uh, Kurt Clausen was on that team. Greg Eifert, Jim Rowinski, uh, Ricky Hall, uh, on and on and on. Uh, we were uh, team picked ninth that year. They picked us ninth in the league, and uh, uh, we ended up. Uh, uh, tying with Illinois for first and uh, the game at Minnesota last game of the year we had to have that game to tie Illinois and we won a, a, just a heart stopper we won by one or two points in uh, Minneapolis and when we got home we had uh, several thousand people here to greet us so that was special because it was my first taste of winning a Big Ten championship with really good kids and they really deserved it and it was fun it was kids we had recruited Took us four years, uh, got here in 80 and 84, we win the league championship with Illinois. So that was uh, probably the memory. And that kind of, you know, uh, jump-started us into our next uh, recruiting class with Troy Lewis and Todd Mitchell and Everett Stevens and those kids, Kip Jones and Melvin McCant. So those, uh, uh, that 84 team kind of got everybody's attention that we might have known what we were doing here, so they wanted to come here and play. <laughs> oh, how about an outstanding event in your life? Could you think of something like that? Outstanding what? Event. Oh, gosh. Uh, I guess when I married my wife, it'd be one. Sounds good. <laughs> Children being born is always big. Uh, right. You know, uh, being baptized in a church was big. So uh, uh, getting the job at Purdue, uh, any job that I got uh, was big for me because uh, I never ever got a job I applied for. You know, you know, you always look at some place, you send letters in, application, but I always got a job because they wanted me. So. It's kind of an unusual yeah. uh, scenario, but uh, uh, it was uh, it, it's just special to have a, a great family and have uh, uh, people that uh, understand how hard you work, and uh, that sort of situation was always mu very much appreciated by Pat and I. All right, and the community has, has grown a lot since you've been here, hasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. really expanded. Lafayette's expanded in all areas, and uh, it's fun to see that, uh, a lot of changes. Uh, you know, a lot of fast food places. It's unbelievable how many we got to those now. But the housing development has really been great, so that's been fun. They've added a lot of golf courses, and of course, I like that. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it's just a great place to live. And it's handy too, uh, both Indianapolis and Chicago. Chicago. Right? Yeah. That's always fun to go to Chicago. Uh, we love Indianapolis, so uh, it's been a great uh, location for us. Any. Um thing that I have not asked that you'd like to share with us in, in closing anything overall? Well, pretty you much, uh, you covered pretty much all facets. Uh, uh, I just want to thank all the people, how loyal they were to us over the years and how much fun it was coaching for them and, and uh, really how we appreciate all the cards they sent to Pat when she was ill and, right. and all the uh, understanding that people gave us when, because a lot of people have been through that too and they knew what she was going through. So. Uh, those things are something that's been special. We re have appreciated the fact that people uh, didn't forget us. Oh, they wouldn't do that. But that's <laughs> nice that she's coming along. That's very nice. Yes, it is. Uh, it's you know, Purdue has a lot of traditions. Is there any tradition of Purdue that, that sticks in your mind, like the Boilermaker Special or anything? In well, that's always special. You see the Boilermaker Special coming down the street. You know there's a game that day probably or something going on that's going to be big. Uh, uh, tremendous. Uh, 
agriculture school here. Uh, it's known worldwide, and engineering school is unbelievable, and all the departments that uh, uh, the professors teach in has been special to me. Almost every department was always very special to me. They always treated me great, so it was always fun. Anytime we'd go to the foreign places to play, uh, we played in Taiwan once, uh, played in Australia, New Zealand, uh, played in Germany, I uh, played in Cuba with the Pan American team. Any place you go, there would be Purdue graduates there, believe it or not. A lot of uh, Chinese people, of course, in Taiwan were very supportive of our team in Taiwan. We spent 16 uh, days in, in Taipei, so uh, that was special. It's always special to see other nationalities come to Purdue and graduate and then support you when you come play basketball there. Right. Just England, right. England, there was a lot of people that would come watch our games. Not a lot, but you know, a lot to us is 14, 15,000 there. If you have 20 or 30, it's big, but, uh, but that was always appreciated when we go to foreign countries and uh, have people with banners and stuff with Purdue on it. So that was always fun to see. And it's a, there's alumni international around the world, so wherever you go, there's just oh, Purdue people. People there backing you. Yeah, it was uh, always good uh, to see. A lot of them were engineers. So, uh, and I went down this year, I got to, uh, I was a green uh, flag honoree uh, this year down at the 500. I'd never done that before, and they had me come down and do that this year. Got to meet a lot of the pit crews. And a lot of the pit crews at the, with the race cars, the Indy race cars, were Purdue graduates because they were engineers, so that was fun. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Anything in closing that you'd like to share uh, with the researchers, the people, or anything special? No, I just appreciate uh, the research that Purdue does, trying to you know solve uh, different diseases and do better ways in technology. And, and uh, you know, we have a great nursing school here, and we have uh, unbelievable... Uh, departments, uh, the food uh, uh, and health uh, is great here. So it's just uh, amazing how much, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand how uh, Purdue affects the whole world because we really uh, contribute to the educational part of that and the, the uh, fact that they can produce such uh, intelligent people that can go out and become executives and, and the CEOs and you know, Kurt Claussen is a, a young man that played for me and he does a tremendous job taking companies and revamping them and, and uh, having uh, great success with it. So I'm very, I'm very proud of him, the things he's done. Of course, I could name 50 guys I'm proud of it that's come here and played and were mm -hmm. graduates of Purdue and how they've used the Purdue degree to, to advantage for their family. So it was, that's, that's always fun to see and, and I'm very proud of them. And mostly I just want to thank you for having me do this because this, well, this has been fun. Well, thank you very much, Coach Eden. Thank you very much.